Welcome to Shortview Trading. My name is Chris Watling. I'm the CEO and Chief Market Strategist of Longview Economics and Shortview Trading. And this is your morning market hit for Monday, 21st of October. It's around 9 a.m. London time. So if you want to trade equity index futures, you want to go long or short the S&P 500 futures or the FTSE, the DAX, the NASDAQ, any of those equity index futures, how should you go about that? What factors do you need to consider to think about trading markets on a one to two week time frame? That's what we're going to dig into in this video. And the first thing you think about before deciding whether to go long or short equity index futures on that one to two week time frame is the price action. The price action of global financial assets, the price action of the S&P 500, the price action within the S&P 500 amongst key sectors. All of this is part of the global financial puzzle. And it's important to understand this before you go ahead and start thinking about whether to go long or short equity index futures. Because if you look at markets in the last couple of weeks, there's clearly a narrative that's been building. And that narrative is that Trump has got momentum in the election and that's influencing asset prices. Look at this quote from the JP Morgan cross asset market strategist, where he talks about Trump momentum driving financial prices, driving cyclicals, and the market even thinking about pricing in a Republican clean sweep. Or similarly, earlier last week, Stan Druckenmiller, very well known hedge fund manager, very successful, talking about the idea that markets in the last couple of weeks have been pricing a Trump victory. And indeed, if you look wider afield, you look at the betting odds for the election, they clearly moved dramatically in Trump's favor. Look at the chart we're putting up in front of you now. Real clear politics betting odds shifted dramatically towards Trump and away from Harris in the last few weeks over the course of October. Similarly, if you look at some of the very good election forecasters, the good election predictors out there, the likes of Nate Silver of Silver Bulletin, well-known and very good at predicting, predicting outcomes by quanting a whole chunk of numbers. His model shifted at the back end of last week to favoring Trump having been favoring Harris for several weeks. So he's now predicting Trump as the most likely outcome, albeit there's lots of uncertainty still associated with that. Similarly, his old forecasting outfit, 538, that's now owned by ABC News, shifted as well over the weekend to favor Trump. So it's clear that the financial markets, the election betting odds, and the election forecasters are shifting to favor Trump. And you can see that in various asset prices. Look at the way airlines have behaved over the last couple of months, up around 45% since their August lows. Look at financials, the S&P financials, very strong over the course of the last few weeks, up 5% in October. Or indeed, look at gold, pricing in presumably a fiscally profligate Donald Trump. So clearly from a market narrative perspective, from the political betting odds and the key forecasters, it looks like momentum is really shifting towards Trump. And of course, Trump is very business friendly. That's what the equity markets like about him. He's into deregulation, reducing the number of rules. He's into cutting corporation tax, reducing bank capital that's required, et cetera, et cetera. All of these factors that are business friendly and therefore are considered to be a real boost for cyclical areas of the market. So, so the argument goes, the airlines are up dramatically in the last couple of months, very cyclical area of the market. The financials, more importantly, bigger sector, up dramatically in the last few weeks, around 5% in October. The likes of Bitcoin, of course, up as well, bouncing sharply in the last five, 10 days. And as we know, Trump's talked about promoting the idea of Bitcoin. So all of this feeds into that narrative and makes people come to the view that actually that's what's been driving markets. But it's really not quite that simple because if it was really all about Trump, you would have thought the dollar would go down. Trump's fiscally profligate. He wants to put tariffs on all US imports. This is all dollar negative. If it was all about Trump, you would have thought other asset prices like oil services companies would be doing really well because in Trump's mind, it's drill, baby, drill. And that's great for oil services companies that provide services into the oil sector. But no, the oil service sector is down quite meaningfully in the last couple of weeks. So it's not entirely clear that it's all about Trump. And in fact, as we wrote about in last Friday's Longview on Friday, or indeed Longview from London, which is available on Substack, just search our Substack page up and you'll see it there. There's much more going on in these global financial markets. There's been a major asset allocation switch out of bonds into equities that's been going on since early August. 
and that looks like it's becoming really quite toppy. In fact, if you look at equity markets back in August after that initial sell-off, they were very oversold. They're now overbought. If you look at bonds back in early August, they're very overbought. They're now very oversold. So you can see that how that asset allocation switch has played out. And when you look at our model of equities relative to bonds on that medium term time frame, we've gone from getting a buy signal on equities back in early August to getting a sell signal on equities and a buy signal on bonds as we stand today. So it looks as though there's been a major asset allocation switch going on over the last couple of months that's been driven by positioning and technical models, on top of which, of course, we've had huge amounts of stimulus announcements out of China, which is very positive cyclically for the global economy and therefore needs to be priced into markets. So it's not quite clear it's all about Trump. Trump, no doubt, is part of it, but there's lots else going on as well. And that's why we like to lean on the models, because they're objective. They don't come with backfitting. They're not trying to fit the narrative to the price move. They're telling you what the models have done and reflecting what risk appetite's done and what positioning has done. And that is a great way to go about investing in markets on a one to two week time frame or even a longer term time frame. So if you're interested in taking a trial of our one to two week daily risk appetite gauge, this is the product where we make explicit recommendations on S&P index futures and other index futures on a one to two week time frame. We throw all our models in there every day. They're updated every trading session. We talk about the price action in global financial markets and in the S&P 500. And we give an explicit recommendation on whether to go long or short equity index futures on that one to two week time frame. If you're interested in a trial of that, simply click on the link below, fill out your details, and we'll send you the daily risk appetite gauge for free for a bunch of trading sessions. Equally, if you're a subscriber, it should be in your inbox around 9 a.m. London time every business day.